Hello friends, I hope you are well. Welcome back to The Dirt Report. I have been super busy over the last few weeks with new reviews and so the report has had to take a backseat, but today is the day. And since I haven't done a report in a little while, I thought it would try and summarize multiple stories across the last couple of weeks. So today we have some NBN news, a C broadband report and Amazon is joining the internet party. Thanks for jumping in. Make sure to like this video if you did. Subscribe if you want to be notified of all future videos. And of course, to support this channel. So let's get started by rolling the intro. Ambient Co, the company responsible for building and operating Australia's national broadband network, plans to reduce its workforce by approximately 10%, or around 500 positions by the end of the financial year, which is very, very soon. The redundancies will mostly affect middle and senior management roles in all business units, with some impacts on other levels of employees, so we're told. Ambient Co aims to preserve and grow field-based roles associated with its Fiber Connect upgrade program, as well as with upgrade works on its fixed wireless and satellite networks. The company has initiated an engagement process with its employees to communicate the changes and consult with them directly. I'm sure asking, hey, do you want to lose your job would have a pretty clear answer of no. Now, NB and Co shedding some fat might not be a bad thing. However, I bet it's probably because the interest rates on all the loans are getting a bit spicy, meaning bonuses this year aren't going to buy them the second holiday home anymore. Thanks, RBA. Now, as stated, most reports indicate these changes will not affect the fiber upgrade, but the less admin stuff might mean that things take a little bit longer on the paperwork side. I imagine this shouldn't be a problem on the physical work because that still takes plenty of time anyway. I'm hopeful, though the soon-to-be price increases are a little bit concerning. Speaking of NBN prices, we finally have some visibility on NBN Co's new wholesale pricing. Maybe the job cuts get passed on to customers after all. So not all is doom and gloom. The home fast 100 down 20 up is reducing by a mere 1.1% and includes a bit more CVC in the bundle. Will this affect customer pricing? I don't know. Will RSPs pass it on? We're not quite sure. 1.1 seems like a really ridiculous thing to pass on. Next up, Home Superfast 250 down, 25 up is going down by 1.9%. Home Ultra Fast up to 1000 down and 50 up is getting a whole 10% discount. Now the 100 down, 40 up going up by 4%, which Makes me quite sad, that's the one I'm on. And 250 down 100 up is getting a huge 21.8% hike. But note the significant increase in CVC inclusions, which will make all the RSPs very happy. 500 down 200 up is dropping by 12%, but getting a very significant reduction in CVC inclusion, which might mean a bit more congestion when things get busy. Nonetheless, 1000 down 400 up is getting a massive discount of 23.8%, but having its CVC cut in half, that's concerning. I expect this was made based on usage rates, so to match the 1000 down 50 up plan. The issue I see is a bit of the old price discrimination. The total cost for NBN to provide a symmetrical connection, for example, 100 down and 100 up, or 1000 down and 1000 up, is almost identical to going 100 slash 20 up, or 1000 down and 50 up. It's a little bit ridiculous. By nature, customers consume more internet than upload, and our Australian usage skews on the download side significantly, maybe because of all the shows people download. But NBN and Co keeps doing what they're doing with their current prices. The reality is these prices are a reflection of NBN Co's credit facility. To keep its rating up, they need to price gouge the upload. And now with interest rates going up, it's even more prudent and important for them. But it is a little bit unfair. Meanwhile, over the ditch, New Zealand is offering 1,000 down and 500 up for 105 sheep per month. Moving on, Enminco is considering expanding its satellite mobility services for airlines to international carriers as they enter Australian airspace. 
Interesting. The large passenger commercial aircraft product faces external competition, and Enminco is looking to enhance the product to provide fleet plans and support transient international airlines. The idea was raise an internal product development forum, and a more developed proposal is expected to be workshopped with the industry in June this year. The LPCA product was trialed by Qantas in 2016 for domestic in-flight Wi-Fi services, and Qantas has expressed interest in bringing Wi-Fi services to its international flights as well. If you're recently taking a Qantas flight, 99% of flights do have Wi-Fi and it's pretty impressive. It works well enough to communicate with your friends and family while on the go. So let me know below if you would like to see more connection, faster connections, and probably Starlink on planes. I'm just joking, maybe NBNCO is better, I don't know. Now on to HFC. NBNCO has announced it is switching to new chipsets for its hybrid fiber coaxial cable modems. Now the change is expected to provide faster and more reliable internet speeds for customers on the HFC network. The new chipsets will be supplied by Broadcom, replacing the previously used ARIS chipset. The switch is set to take place in the second half of 2023. However, NBN Co has also reported that they have experienced their first ever dip in active HFC services. The company's latest weekly progress report shows that the number of active HFC connections has dropped by 1,000 to 1.12 million, representing a decline of 0.1%, which doesn't really seem like much. Despite this decline, NBNCO has reported an overall increase in the number of active connections across all access technologies, with total active connections increasing to 8.9. Now, I appreciate HFC for all that it is, and in the end, it is better than your standard copper line. And I imagine speeds will be enough for most people. And according to 10 years ago, back in, I would have said 50 would be enough for me right there and then. But then I got some roommates and thought, hell no, we need more bandwidth. To that end, according to the report by the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission, ACCC, the residential broadband market has flattened and smaller telcos have gained wholesale market share. The report shows that the NBN market share for the top four providers has declined while smaller providers have increased their market share. The report also highlights that while the number of new NBN customers decreased during COVID-19, there was an increase in data usage by existing customers. Additionally, the report discussed the impact of the pandemic on the telecommunication industry and the need for continued investment in broadband infrastructure Mr. Morrow, do you hear this? And lastly, Amazon is finally planning to launch their satellite-based internet service to compete with NBN and Starlink in Australia. The service is expected to offer speeds of up to 450 megabits per second and will target consumers in rural and remote areas where fixed line broadband services are unavailable or are unreliable. Now, Amazon has reportedly secured regulatory approvals from the Australian Communication and Media Authority to launch 3,236 low earth orbit satellites to support the service. However, the launch date and pricing details of the service are yet to be announced. I expect them to be very similar to Starlink, so don't get your hopes up. But you know what? If they really want to make an impact, go in low, get people to just buy it over Starlink. So hold on to your hats, folks. It's going to get very, very busy and messy up there in low Earth orbit. But what's not messy is this ending. Maybe it is, because it is time to end this episode. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you like this video if you did, and smash the subscribe button to support us and be notified of all future videos. Thanks for watching, and bye. And I can take a breather finally. <sighs> Ah, time to go edit this video. See ya!